So let's say you're uh, in a class and the teacher has a, a large class, has a large number of students, and it, they, they tell you that there was a, a bell-shaped curve to the exam scores. And then they release the following two pieces of information. They say that the average was a 77% uh, with a standard deviation of 16%. Answer the following. Uh, what percent of the class scored uh, below a passing grade of 70%? What percent of the class scored above a 90% and what percent of the class scored between 70% and 90%? So in each of these, we're looking for uh, the percentage of the population below a particular value on this bell-shaped distribution. So in order to answer this, we're going to kind of uh, make a, a couple of assumptions. This idea that it's a bell-shaped curve really tells me it's like, you know, I'm probably safe by saying that this looks like it's approximately a normal distribution. And if it's a bell-shaped curve for this normal distribution, uh, the fact that they said the average could mean that uh, we're talking about the mean or, or the median, and they're both roughly going to be the same value. So I'm going to assume that this is the mean score of the exams. So we've got this bell-shaped distribution. We know what the mean and standard deviation is. So I'm going to just kind of look at a, a general picture of the distribution of exam scores. The general picture tells me that the center here, the mean, is 77%. So the mean here is that 77% average. The standard deviation being 16% tells me that uh, if I use that empirical rule where 68% of the scores are is one standard deviation below and one standard deviation above the mean, well, on the graph, that's kind of where this inflection point occurs, that concave down to concave up region. So this point where that graph changed that, that type of property of going in a downward to an upward flow is called an inflection point. And so I know that distance from the mean is my standard deviation. So this distance right here for my picture, sigma, is 16%. So I want to answer the following based on this picture. Is what percent of the class scored below a grade of 70%? So I'm going to call that the uh, first question, second question, and third question. So number one, I'm going to look at the picture here. Uh, what percent was below a passing grade of 70%? So 70% is somewhere down here. It's not quite one standard deviation away, but it's somewhere in between there. So here's my 70%. I want to be able to find this percentage of the graph. And so we, we know if we have exactly one standard deviation or two or three, we can use that empirical rule. But I don't have that because I am 7% uh, away from the mean. That's less than one standard deviation. So we're going to have to rely on z-scores to try to calculate this percentage. So we look at the z-score uh, for this 70%. And just keep in mind our, our definition of z-score is the observed minus the mean over the standard deviation. So the z-score for the 70% is going to be 70 minus the mean is 77 over my standard deviation was uh, 16. And my table only goes to one decimal point for the z-scores. So I'm going to um, look at this to two decimal places and figure out how I'm going to get a good approximation. So I have, let's see, 70 minus 77 and dividing that by 16. So I see it, my result here is a, a negative 0.4 and if you round that to the hundredth place here, negative 0.44. So I go to my z-score table that gives me, um, when we look at this table, it's giving me the percentage up to the point when we read from left to right. So if I look at the graph, this is the z-score, it's finding me this percentage up to that value of z. So negative 0.44 falls between negative 0.4 and negative 0.5. And it's roughly in the middle, so I'm going to take the uh, average here of these two outputs from the table. 
And again, I, I'm doing the average because negative 0.4, negative 0.5, if I round it up or round it below, I'm either overestimating or underestimating that actual percentage. And I know it's going to be between 30.8% and 34.5%. If we needed to be uh, have a, a safeguard in place where underestimating was more appropriate, then you just round it that correct direction. So in the, our case here, it's, it's not a kind of rocket science problem. We're just trying to get an estimate here. Uh, taking the average of those two should get me negative 0.4 pretty close to the correct answer. So the uh, percentage below a 70% is going to be the average of those two, and I already forgot the numbers, 30.854. Uh, and the uh, percentage below negative 0.4 was 34.458. So I shouldn't say is or approximately. So our approximate answer, we bought a calculator again, so we got the uh, 30.854 plus 34.45 is uh, 64.8665, and I want to divide that by 2. So I have 32.43. Or 32.4%. So in that class, uh, roughly 32% or 32.4% of the class uh, did not pass the exam with a, a, a C or higher. So in question two, we want to do something very similar, but this time we're looking for what scored above a 90%, so we're going to be looking at a higher tail. And number three is going to be looking between that 70 and 90% value. Now, when we look at number two, it's nice to go to calculating z-scores, but we have to remember what the table actually gives us so that we do our calculation correctly here. So I'm going to look at my picture. Again, we're doing number two, so we want to know the percentage above 90% on the test. So on my graph here, I'm going to be looking at 90% and 90% would be still less than one standard deviation away. And I want to find this percentage of the population. So if I go to calculate the z-score, I'm going to be taking the observed minus the mean over the standard deviation. These are all percentages. And I get that the z-score here, so I have 90 minus 77, dividing that by, whoops, yeah, it was 13, uh, dividing that by 16, is 0.8125. Now again, my table only goes up to the first decimal place, so we'll decide what we do when we, we see the result. Um, but the table, what it's going to do is if I look up at this z-score, it's going to give me, okay, here's z equal to 0.8125. That table will give me this percentage below. And so if I want the percentage above, I'm going to have to take that number and subtract it from 100%. Because if I add up both of these, both regions here, they have to add to 100%. So when I look at the table, I get this left-hand region. I'm going to subtract that from 100 to give me the right-hand region, which is what I'm looking for in the solution to this problem. So the table tells me that this percentage is approximately equal to, uh, and let's go up to our table, we're looking at 0.8125, so we see 0.8 is 78.8%, uh, 0.9 is 81.59%, 0 
8.125, this would be uh, better to round it down to the 0.8 rather than taking the average because that might overestimate um, that true percentage by a larger margin than if we rounded it down below. So depending on how you want to make your error, use how you make your rounding decisions again. But in this case, I'm going to use this value. And it's 78.8. We can round that to 78.8, and that will be underestimating it, or round this up to 79%. So we're really getting get kind of a fuzzy picture. And that's the best you can do with the z-score tables is get an approximation to that probability. Unless you got extremely lucky and the z-score matched exactly a z-score on the table itself. And then those numbers are right to um, two decimal places before rounding had occurred. So long story short, uh, what we found is that the area to the left was 78%. Or um, what we said was we're going to round this to about roughly 79%. And so that means this region here, that's going to have to be uh, approximately the amount to make this 100%, so 21%. And so our conclusion is that we know that what percentage uh, is above 90% on the test is approximately... twenty one percent of the class now to our, our third question what percentage of the class is between a seventy percent and a ninety percent so when we look at number three here Again, I can do um, the picture view of what's going on. Get that entirely on the screen now. I'm looking for this region. Here's my 70% and here's my 90%. Well, the 90 is overestimating there, so here's 90%. I want the area of this region. So again, if we go straight to calculating z-scores, we'll notice that we had already done that. Uh, the 70% z-score is what we did in part one. And so I'm going to kind of skip right to that step. When we look at the 70%, it had a z-score of negative 0.44. The 90%, we just found that it has a z-score, and I believe that was 0.8125. So from the table, we could pull off what this area was. And from that table, we could also figure out what this area is. And so then we're just figuring out the missing piece. So I've got, already got these two numbers, but what, let's assume that, you know, what if I didn't know that information already? How do I answer this? Well, the 70% z-score gives me the area to the left uh, on the table. So using the table, I can get that this percentage. So if I go to that 0.44 again and use the average, that this percentage was roughly what we said was 32.4%. Uh, so I'm just using that same idea that we did last time on a table of going, okay, negative 0.4 is in between here, so let's just take the average. So that's where that 32.44% comes from. So how can I get this uh, region between here? Well, I know the z-score for 90% was 0.8125. And what we said is that this percentage is 79% from our earlier work. And so this area is just going to be that difference. And so the difference is 79 minus the 32.4 or 46.6%.